All right, Thorsten, um, you've been part of the group exhibit now for several years. Nevertheless, could you please uh, give us a short introduction uh, what is iSynod about? Okay, we are here with uh, one product lines of the products we make. And this is uh, based, um, or the basis for these products is uh, carbon composite plates. So we are producing bipolar plates for fuel cells and uh, redox flow batteries. And on the other hand, we have also launched a new product line. This is uh, titanium blazed uh, plates based also on composite. That means they, they have a plastic binder which is able to um, have a lot of flexibility when processing it. All right, so you already introduced uh, your products. Uh, can you give us an overlook for which, uh, or give us some examples for which end user products uh, these plates are used? Yes, um, the thing is that uh, graphitic bipolar plates are mostly used in applications which have special requirements, especially um, long lasting requirements. And uh, for that reason, they are mostly used in domestic heating applications and uh, also independent power supply. Um, for the automotive sector, you usually have metallic bipolar plates. This is not our business, so we deliver the research uh, institutes or research departments of the automotive companies. But we are not a serious supplier in this field because they stick on metal at the moment. All right, okay, so now one of your main competence are bipolar plates made of graphite. Um, can you summarize the latest improvements, what is happening there? Yes, we have just launched a new material, which is uh, injection moldable, so we can uh, do a very good uh, processing time and process cycles. And this new material has the characteristics that... Um, it has a very good co uh, electrical conductivity and a good possibility. So it is a good material uh, also on the long-term period. Okay, so long time lasting is there really important. And, and I guess the, yeah, um, the newest electrolyzer generation now, um, this is consisting also of titanium plates. Uh, what's the difference regarding costs and quality to existing technologies there? Okay, for the titanium plates, uh, usually you for the titanium plates you usually have um, uh, machine plates in the stacks in the big stacks for big electrolyzers, and we have uh, developed a mixture of uh, polymers on the one hand and titanium powder on the other hand, and this uh, enables us to do this on a long view to uh, inject these plates or do the plates by injection molding as well. And this means a big cost advantage. Okay, can you say something more about the cost uh, advantage, maybe? Well, to be honest, it really depends on the geometry of these plates. So it's hard to say it is always 20 or 30 percent uh, cheaper. Uh, at the end of the day, we have to look at the design and then uh, you have to decide how to produce it. And if you have milling technology in order to produce these plates, then uh, this is a very attractive uh, alternative. All right. And uh, last year, you announced uh, to step into a first application with this uh, new material. Can you tell us more about this use case now? Yeah, this is mostly okay. So far, we are using it uh, for small volume production of hydrogen in certain applications, and it's working pretty well, yes. Okay, so it's not into the mass market yet? No, no. Of course, of course. Um. All right, now to your latest uh, project that is called impro plate what does that mean now okay we are at the moment we're working also on a, a public funded project in order to produce or to improve the processability of these plates and yes we uh, look at every different step of the technology in order to 
uh, find out what to improve and to make it better so at, at the end of the day we are able to produce the parts, the components, bipolar plates much more cost effective. Okay, so you, you try to improve the producing process or also the design of the plate? Mostly producing process, mostly characteristics. The design is mostly driven by our customers. So they decide what they want to have and then uh, we make it. All right. Um, and last year for your improvements or for your developments, you were honored with the German Sustainability Award for the development of a biofuel cell for wastewater plant. Can you describe us how is this working? Um, yes, this is a little bit uh, a close application uh, when you compare it especially with electrolyzers. So you, all, uh, you also have uh, water in application, but this is not pure water, it is wastewater. And, uh, but you add, on uh, the one hand you have the water, on the other hand you have uh, oxygen from air, and when you uh, put them together there's a reaction going on, and this is also an electrochemical reaction, and this enables us to produce electricity on the one hand, and secondly, this is most important, uh, you can clean the water. So it is a double effect, and uh, this uh, has a lot of uh, potential for different applications. Okay, and can you tell us something about the size maybe, what is possible in such a sewage plant uh, or about uh, on which step of the cleaning process uh, this technology can be used? Um, the, f uh, the approach, the one first approach was for the uh, wastewater plant, uh, we uh, focus on a certain size uh, which is de uh, dependent from the inhabitants, but um, at the moment we are working on a smaller system where you can clean up water, also reduce the ingredients, uh, and uh, this, is make, uh, this is possible also for uh, several liters or several hundred liters. So there's a huge potential to clean the water electrochemically. That's the key issue, not by filters or whatever, but electrochemically. Okay, and are there more plants now interested in this technology or can you give us a, uh, a future vision? Uh, what what are yet the next development steps with this technology now? Okay, we are looking now at an application um, <coughs> for uh, cleaning wastewater for small uh, off-grid uh, uh, places and there's a high demand or a high interest, let's say, uh, in order to get this technology moving. Mm -hmm. And do you think of uh, international cooperation there? Yeah, at the end where's, of the day. Where's the market? Yeah. In Europe? Uh, yes, uh, this is focused on Europe. We have some uh, other German companies who have shown interest in this technology. And, uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, Europe is uh, almost domestic market, so uh, we are focusing on Europe, yes. Okay. Um, maybe one last also really in interesting topic is 3D printing. Uh, what do you think? Is uh, 3D, 3D printing uh, for battery and fuel cell components coming the next years or how is the state? Well, it is already there. We deliver some test systems already with 3D printed parts. At the end of the day for serious production you always have to look at the part. You have different options how to pr produce it and 3D printing is an option, but it is not the only one. So for very high volume, it is better to stick to injection molding or to other technologies. Mm -hmm. And is the, is, uh, I think this is only possible with the graphite plates, right? Yes, uh, metal is, um, well, there are 3D printers also for metal parts, but um, this technology is very, uh, um, it has some advantages for uh, very sophisticated design, very complicated parts, but for standard parts it is not a good technology. Yes, mostly we focus on plastic. And plastic, okay. 
Um, so yeah, in the end, we, we heard uh, several improvements or several interesting technologies. That, um, I feel now you're really both innovative on the one hand and sustainable also on the other hand uh, by heart. Um, is there any project or do you have any vision uh, uh, that you want to implement in the future? Yes, we want to focus on our technologies. We want to keep on moving, and we hope that, uh, I mean, uh, during this exhibition, the discussion about renewables is very uh, impressive. And uh, yes, I think we have a good perspective for the future. Uh, and where do you see the main markets, or where are where is the production sites located? Is it what do you think moving? out of Europe or is it possible to drive it like we hope all to stay in Europe with the production of the technology? Yeah, I also hope that it will, it will stay in Europe, but at the end of the day it's important that the system integrator are also willing to have it here uh, in Europe. So um, we, as a we are a component supplier and we want to deliver preferred, uh, preferably customers in Europe. But uh, at the end of the day, the customers decide uh, where to do it and how to do it. Either they make it by themselves, hopefully here, or they buy it. And indeed, we have now the risk that we see a technology which could move also to Asia and uh, becomes like batteries. Asia becomes then the production site for the world. But uh, I'm still pretty confident that we have some technologies which will be developed here. Okay, so the knowledge is there and the technology is ready also to implement. Yeah, for that, uh, I wish you all the best. Um, uh, yeah, thank you in the audience. If there is... No, I don't see any questions from here. Uh, thanks for joining us here in the morning. And uh, thank you, Thorsten, for being here with us. Yeah, and have a nice day on the fair right now. Thank you very much.